to LeBron James, who had no excuses last night. He scored 17 points in the fourth to rally the Cavs past the Jazz and earn their seventh straight victory. The Cavs improved to 25-1 and at home in regular season since King James returned from taking two weeks off last January. Here he is after the game. I know I could be out of rhythm for a long part of the game, but I know that I can, you know, at some point, if I can get a layup or a free throw or, or easy one, I can kind of hit the switch. And, you know, my teammates did a great job of just sticking with me, and I'm glad I was able to come through for them. Skip, scale of 1 to 10, how impressive was this? Stephen A., I love LeBron's game last night. I'm going to go all the way to a 10, and obviously, I'm sorry, a 9, and I would go to a 10 if the opponent had been a little more worthy, maybe even on the road, but, but Utah, even though they're extremely long and extremely tall, they really don't have the muscle or athletic ability to deal with LeBron James when, when he is committed. And did he ever get committed in the fourth quarter? What I saw last night, Stephen A., was LeBron doing what he does greatest when his team needed him the most. I thought he looked last night as fresh and as, as athletic, quick, powerful, explosive, maybe more so than I saw any time last year. He looked, I know he's had back issues, but boy, he looked like vintage younger LeBron last night, and I was impressed. I was also impressed that with 10.05 left in the fourth quarter, I'm assuming he leaned over to David Blatt and said, put me back in, because usually, as you well know, the stars wait until maybe the seven-minute or six-minute mark to come in and give it their all down the stretch. And LeBron saw the game slipping away. They were down five with 10.05 to go. And I'm assuming he said, put me in, coach. And in he came. He missed his first shot, an eight-foot jumper. And then from that point on, he scored 17 points all in the lane. What do we always say on this show? Take it to the rack because nobody can stop the freight train that is LeBron James when he unleashes on a team like he did on Utah. And all of a sudden, you can just look down the play-by-play. -play. Layup, you know, five-footer off the glass. Layup plus one. Rodney Hood made the dumb play of the night, actually tried to, to stop LeBron from shooting a layup by hugging him. You, you can't hug LeBron James. You better take him down because he took you down, took you right to the hole for an and one, and he made that free throw. His free throws are always a little bit of a liability. He made five out of eight, but he was getting to the free throw line, hurting Utah that way. And to his credit, Stephen A., he took one three-point shot in the whole game, and it was a, a, a one to go ahead, 98-96, with five minutes to go, and he missed that. LeBron is having a dismal three-point shooting year so far. What is he? Um, he, he I, I'm losing my track here, but he's like six for 29. Yeah, six for 29, 20% from the three-point line. He doesn't need to shoot from three. We saw in the playoffs, he set the all-time record for players with 100 or more attempts with 22.7% in the playoffs last year. I, I don't even know why he wastes his time shooting threes. You can argue he needs to keep the defenders honest. But once he said no more threes and he continued to attack, this game got out of hand in favor of the home team. So to me, that, that was vintage LeBron saving his team from from a pretty ugly home loss and obviously they still don't have a, a, a Shumpert and you know obviously they're, they're they're not quite at full strength right now and when they do get healthy with Kyrie and Shumpert then they're going to be a force to reckon with I, I don't see anybody beating them in the east well I got a news for you number one they, they may have a problem I might have to concede that there's some level of legitimacy that I got to give to my man Mike Wilbon who raved about Mo Williams and talked about how he's a former teammate of LeBron's yep. that LeBron can trust and this dude drops 29 last night I mean that that's what you expect from Kyrie Irving and the fact that Mo Williams showed big. you yeah. what he can do that's a really really big deal especially when you talk about playoff time because if Kyrie is back yep. and you've got Mo Williams as, as that backup, whether, you know, I mean, you got those two and you could just rely on Matthew Della Vadova for defense, but you're not looking for him to run the team or be an offensive presence. So yep. in that regard, I definitely think that's a plus for Cleveland. As it pertains to LeBron James, Skip, I don't worry about him shooting threes and all of that stuff that much. I actually like the fact that he, whether it's threes or perimeter shots, I think he needs to shoot that as much as possible, at least for the first three quarters. Fourth quarter is money time. That's when you do what you need to do. When the game's on the line, you need to go 
to the hole. You don't need to be hesitant in any way about getting to the free throw line. And that's what we that's where we've seen the real maturation from LeBron James back in the day. Let's call it what it is. He wasn't that confident in his free throw shooting. And as a result, it's, he seemed a bit timid and a bit tentative about getting fouled because he didn't want to have to go to the free throw line. But that was years and years ago. I think in recent memory, we see a guy that's relatively fearless when it comes to going to the free throw line. If he makes it, he makes it. If he misses it, he misses it. But he clearly has the confidence that he can go to the line with, the money, with money time on the line and get it done. And that's what you saw last night in the fourth quarter. So I give him a lot of credit for that. Uh, but I got to tell you something as well. Uh, you know, he needs to do that more in the fourth quarter. Uh, but he doesn't need to be playing 37 minutes the way that he played last night. He doesn't need to have to be the guy that comes through for them. The Cleveland Cavaliers, I mean, Kevin Love is on that squad for a reason. He had 22 last night, even though his shooting percentage wasn't that great, like 6 for 16. Mo Williams is capable of scoring on the offensive side of the ball. Moskov's got some talent. At some point in time, the Cleveland Cavaliers need to prove I'm not saying in the playoffs, but they need to prove during the regular season that they don't necessarily need LeBron James in order to win regular season games. At least some of them. Somebody else needs to be able to step up and deliver the goods without him having to do it. Because, Skip, if he does what you tell him to do, if he does what you suggest, he's not going to have but so much. Uh, you know, come playoff time because he's putting his body through it, not just by being on the court, but by absorbing all the contact he inevitably is going to absorb when he's attacking the basket. So you don't really want him to do that too much. Do it when you have to, but that his game shouldn't be predicated on that because he won't last. It won't. He won't last for the marathon that way. And before I finish, let me give some props to the Utah Jazz. They're just four and three on the season. Skip Bayless, this team is not bad. I mean, when you look at Alec Burks, who was picked in the first round a couple of years ago, when you look at Trey Burke, when you look at Rodney Hood, who was out of Duke, who was a 23rd overall pick in 2014, he's in your starting lineup. You got Gordon Haywood. You got Derek Favors. I mean, they like you said, they're just not tried, true, and tested. You know, with games that really count. And they're going to succumb to the superstars in this league. They will. But, Ke but Kevin O'Connor and those boys and Walt Perrin and everybody, I mean, this is an impressive young group as far as I'm concerned. They've got some potential yep. in Utah. I like the talent that I see them accumulating. I really do. Okay, but in the end, when LeBron said it's time, they <laughs> shrank. To, to me, and again, they're so, Gobert is so long and tall and in favors and all the rest, but, but they could not deal with the freight train when it was time. And I agree with you, you have to pick your spots, but he really picked a spot last night. You can say it was just Utah and it's early in the year. I just love the way he played. And, and again, well, I, go ahead. And Skip, if you, what I would say to you is that in recent memory over the last several years, we've really only seen two teams that can deal with the freight train, that is LeBron James. It's the San Antonio Correct. Spurs, and it's the Golden State Warriors. And even the Golden State Warriors, the jury is still out yeah, because LeBron had to do it by himself. That's true. You see what I'm saying? No. Without Kyrie and Kevin Love. Right. So really, we know definitively that the San Antonio Spurs can deal with the freight train. We believe that Golden State can because of Steph Curry and the arsenal that he brings. But there is no evidence that anybody else can stop the freight train that is LeBron James. I don't think Golden in State can memory. either. I don't think Golden State can, right. but I think they can outscore Cleveland with LeBron at his greatest. That's, but that's, that's what how I they mean. play. But that's yeah. what I mean. Right. But that's what I mean. I mean, I mean, I mean offsetting. I mean, I, I don't think anybody can stop LeBron James. But even with LeBron doing what he did, it still wasn't enough for San Antonio. Yeah. Even with LeBron doing what he did, it wasn't enough for Golden State. Now, D Wade wasn't a hundred percent obviously when they went against the Spurs in the last series, and then last year, Kevin Love wasn't there and Kyrie went down in game one so there's always issues to point to but in the end those are the only two teams that have proven they can withstand the freight train that is LeBron James nobody in the east has done it in six years yep I and, agree and, and it's just that simple all right last quick point I, I do have to correct you on one thing I'm I'm not sure. with you that LeBron completely now trusts himself at the free throw line late in games, as in with no time left, because we saw in the opener at Chicago against Gasol, I think he shied away from attacking Gasol and having to go shoot two free well, throws. 
to, well, the to, operative word, the, the operative words I would say is, 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 you know, I hear where you're coming from. My belief is that he's fearless about it now. I don't think that he conscientiously thinks about avoiding the free throw line the way I thought he used to. I don't think that's an issue with him anymore. I think he goes out there, he makes the play. If he gets fouled, he gets fouled. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Whereas years and years ago, before he won a championship, I actually thought at times he was scared to go to the free throw line. I don't think that about him now. Mm. And Stephen A., to your point on Mo Williams, his return being a great offseason pickup, when he scores 25 points, five rebounds, five assists, the Cavs are five and one. So clearly making a difference with the injured Kyrie. Welcome to Veterans Day edition here on First Take. Check out our complete rundown on Instagram. Not only do we have Jeezy in the house, but we also have all the hot topics you're waiting to hear from Stephen A. and Skip, their takes, including Rex being Rex. Take a listen. Number one team in the country, got the, arguably the best holder in the country. Uh, so a lot of great things, a lot of positive things with Clemson.